I think Richie Tenenbaum's, I think what he's about is kind of like, uh, just a guy that's always been like a little bit off just because, you know, the way things are in his family and the family splitting up early on and then, you know, how he feels about his adopted sister. It's just things aren't perfect where things could almost be perfect with this family where they're really smart and uh, interesting and kind of overachievers in their own way, but so many like serious flaws. I think like when they were kids and Royal would take Richie and leave Chaz and Margo at home, you know, even though Richie's like a sensitive kid, he wouldn't, he wouldn't know that, you know, that Royal had a favorite. You know, it was just he and Royal getting along and having fun together, and he wasn't, no, he, you know, Richie didn't know that it would hurt their feelings, the other kids' feelings. But I think, uh, you know, with Royal, it was just a case of, like, you know, he doesn't even think of them as kids necessarily. It's just like Richie was the one he liked the most, they got along the best, they had the most fun together, where Chaz is kind of, like, a little uptight, not, uh, you know, very businesslike, and Margo, he... You know, he's, Royal seems like kind of a man's man, you know, and just didn't really feel a connection to those two kids, so didn't hang around them where, you know, a, probably a better parent would have found a way to learn about them, and even though they had differences, would have spent time with them. And uh, Royal's just not like that, and I think when Richie gets older, he realizes that how it hurt the other kids. I gotta say, I love the sunglasses. I'm gonna, I'd like to do that in every movie. And the beard, too. I've never been so relaxed. I, my, my mother was visiting the set, and uh, she left, and I got a message from her saying, I have a couple of ideas about your character. And I called her, and she said, I think that uh, as soon as you can, you should get rid of the beard and uh, take the sunglasses off because you can't see your face, you know? <laughs> I was saying, trying to explain to her, I think that's kind of the exact thing. That's what this guy's trying to do. He doesn't want people to really, he doesn't want people to see his face. And I mean, he doesn't, he's just kind of like hiding, you know. And I can remember talking with Wes at the beginning when Wes was saying, you're going to be wearing a headband. I was like, God, a headband and wristbands? I mean, why? And he keeps the, like, the, the fila with the RT on, even though he's not playing anymore. And I was just kind of trying to figure out a way to, to think about it for myself to where I could legitimize it. And then I came up with, he's getting paid to do it, you know. He, this is his endorsement. He stopped playing tennis, so they probably give him a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to wear this stuff, and that's what he lives on. Richie's paintings are kind of, you know, like his diaries where he records the good things and the bad things that have happened with the family and the things that have happened to him. Like a lot of the characters in the movie, he's had his, like, failures. He's got... It's like it's almost like he's not great at the things he'd like to be great at. Like he'd like to be a great painter. He'd want to be a great drummer. It just so happens that he's a great tennis player, and uh, just the thing that came naturally to him. You know, just like spending time with the Falcon and the the, the scenes that I've worked with. The, you know, you, you get to see how incredible they are, and like the, just the way they look and notice things. And I mean, I feel like that's something kind of like Richie is. He really is kind of notices things and picks up other people's feelings and you know he's got this thing in the family where you know the different relationships between Ethelene and Royal and Chaz and Royal and then the way he feels about Margo he's always kind of trying to keep a hold on things and keep people together to me he also has just from hanging around Royal so much he has some of Royal's no, the words not qualities but maybe uh, you know, he kind of acts like Royal. He can kind of be a hustler at times and be kind of manipulative. Like, uh, you know, when he's when when Richie's talking to Margo and he's saying uh, uh, that, uh, you know, how are you and Raleigh getting along? Do you think you're going to get back together? And uh, he's not asking because he's like concerned he, about them getting back together. I mean, he, he he's asking because he's in love with her and. Uh, I mean, I think to me that I, I like that kind of thing because you can see the connection between he and Royal and, uh, you know, saying, well, you know, if you need somebody to talk to, just let me know. And it's really, if, uh, you know, you'll be talking to me about that, but really, you know, I'm in love with you and you're, you know, got your head on my shoulder. And I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be close to her. Richie's suicide to me is not, definitely not like, uh, you know, um, 
thinking about killing myself, you know, uh, I think it's definitely like where he's really going to do it. I mean, I have to say a few times I've heard about people like attempted suicide, you know, like entertainers and I'm always like, oh, come on, if you're gonna do it, do it, you know? <laughs> Take a couple pills and have some bourbon, you know, and you got your roadie right there, you know you're not gonna die. No, uh, I think he really does it, uh, he really does it because he just kind of can't take it anymore. And I think it's more of, and that was kind of the scary thing to me about doing it. It's not like it wasn't like a big, you know, he didn't get really wrapped up. It was almost just, just a, just a little flicker that just, went through him and he just couldn't really handle it anymore. So I really did it. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I think he really expected to kind of end it.